What's up everybody, Nate here. Michael Burry, the legendary investor and predictor of the 2007-2008 housing market crash is back at it again in 2022 with a brand new prophecy for our economy and stock market. Michael Burry believes that the conditions in the stock market and our economy overall have bubbled over the last few years and now they are about to explode like we have never seen before. And it looks like right now, Michael Burry is preparing for something huge because he just sold off his entire stock portfolio in preparation for what might be coming next. So today I wanna go over exactly what Michael Burry has been saying about the stock market and our economy, what exactly he is warning about and how all of this is going to affect us in the future. All right, so Michael Burry kind of points to four major things that could lead us into a stock market and economic crash in 2022 and beyond. Those four things are the crypto market, inflation, SPACs, and media stocks. And what Michael Burry is doing here is kind of comparing what has happened in the past with crashes in our economy and the stock market and showing what could happen in the future because of today's conditions. He actually believes that we are not completely at the bottom of a stock market or economic crash just yet, but we are just now starting the process. Now the first two things that Michael Burry is discussing here has to do with meme stocks and cryptocurrency. Michael Burry believes that those two assets are extremely speculative exactly like what he saw during the 2007-2008 housing market crash. Essentially what happened back then was you had the subprime mortgage crisis. So you had millions of borrowers that ended up not being able to pay off their mortgage at all. This is because of things like ninja loans where people were literally getting loans that, well, they didn't have to prove their income. They didn't have to have a job. They didn't have to have any sort of assets in order to get this money. They basically just walked into the bank and said, I want a mortgage and they got one. Now, not only that, but people had adjustable rate mortgages. So they were getting a deal at the beginning of their mortgage cycle, but five years down the road, those mortgages reset. And when they went back up, these people could no longer afford their mortgage payments. And then finally, banks and financial institutions were again, giving out loans to anybody. They were giving out subprime mortgages. So even though you might have a really bad credit score, you were still going to get the same mortgage as somebody with a really good credit score. So people were getting all these mortgages. They were getting really big mortgages and they ended up not being able to pay all of them off. This bled into other things in our economy like the stock market. Banks and financial institutions would essentially sell these mortgages off and package them together into mortgage-backed securities and people would bet and buy them on the New York Stock Exchange. And in investors' minds, this wasn't really that big of a deal because people were going to pay off their mortgages and as long as people had money, then this was solid money coming into all of these investment firms. So they weren't actually going to be losing a bunch of money here unless people stopped paying their mortgages, which is exactly what happened. Michael Burry saw this as a speculative investment because there was no real value behind what people were putting their money in. They were just trying to make a whole bunch of money and the same thing with people buying homes that they couldn't afford. These banks and financial institutions and real estate agents were telling people that, well, they need to buy a home because one, a home is the American dream and two, your home is all always going to gain value over time. It's never going to lose value. So you can buy it for whatever you want. And then five, 10, 15 years down the road, you can sell it and you can have no problem. You're going to have all of this money because a home is an asset. That obviously assumes way too much about our markets and assets in general, because we know no single asset in the world goes up forever. It's going to have its ups and downs. And the same thing can be said about the housing market. Now he believes the same exact thing is happening with cryptocurrency and meme stocks. So cryptocurrency has exploded over the last couple of years, mainly due to the fact that we've had really bad inflation and we've had economic uncertainty. So people don't really know what's going to happen with our economy, with our money. So they're going towards other things like cryptocurrency. They're investing in hedges and they're investing in possibly the future of technology and money. Not only that, but there's been a lot of new investors. There's been a lot of new investments in technology. So the cryptocurrency market has has exploded along with the Federal Reserve printing trillions of new dollars, meaning investors have so much more money to invest than they did before. Now we are starting to see the cryptocurrency market come way back down. In November of 2021, Bitcoin hit an all-time high of around $66,000 for one coin. Now in September of 2022, it's hovering at around 20,000. So it's down well over 50% from its all-time high. Michael Burry believes this is a speculative asset. People have been putting their 
their money behind cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, hoping that they can get rich quick, but there is just no guarantee that you're going to see those massive returns forever. And because the market is still in its infancy, nobody really knows what's going to happen with cryptocurrency next. And he believes this is exactly like what we saw during the 2007 crash. You have this big speculative asset with many people pushing new investors into this, just like new homeowners. And now people are left with nothing. Once again, we do not know what's going to happen with the cryptocurrency market. It could go up. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies could continue to be valuable, but there's just no way to tell. And he believes the exact same speculation is happening with meme stocks. Now, meme stocks are something that people are investing in, even though there isn't really any massive value to come out of that stock or company. This whole saga basically started back at the beginning of 2021 with GameStop. Companies like GameStop and AMC and Nokia were massively shorted by hedge funds. So these hedge funds were betting against a lot of these stocks and they were making hundreds of billions of dollars. But online communities eventually caught wind of this and they didn't like that these hedge funds were essentially purposely pushing down a lot of these stocks that they really enjoyed. So they decided to start buying these stocks in mass. That eventually pushed up a lot of these stocks. So they had a lot of success and the bet that the hedge funds made against them ultimately failed. Some hedge funds even went out of business. But the success didn't last forever. And now you have millions of people who are investing in these stocks and now they're losing tons of money. That has kind of resurfaced again with companies like Bed Bath & Beyond in 2022. People are starting to invest in these meme stocks, but these companies don't really have any success that could be coming in the near to distant future. All of that means the speculation and money goes back into the stock market. And once you have all of these people that lose a ton of money and especially beginner investors that lose a lot of money all at once, now tons of money exit the stock market immediately. And that could lead to a stock market crash. The third thing that Michael Burry sees is the SPAC crash. Now in 2020 and in 2021, SPACs were huge. These are special purpose acquisition companies and they're basically just shell companies that are formed to buy another company. That is their whole purpose. They are to acquire another company and hopefully drive up the stock price. It also helps companies to launch a little bit faster on the New York Stock Exchange because of that sort of merger. But we have started to see over the last couple of years, tons of companies launch as an IPO. That is the initial public offering. It means that millions of people that might not have been able to buy that stock before because the company was private or whatever now can buy that stock because it's public on the New York Stock Exchange. That hopefully can fund the company for more, drive the stock price up even more, and now that company has billions upon billions of valuation money in order to grow its business. Now that is normally a good thing, but when you have this in mass and a bunch of companies that aren't really making any profits and don't really have any revenue, well, this is a problem when they start losing a ton of that investor money. That is what we have seen over the last couple of months or so. These IPO and SPAC companies are now losing all of this investor money because of the stock market going down and they don't really have any profits or revenue, particularly in the tech sector. That means they're laying off employees and they're firing people because they don't have the money in order to support them. When you have massive layoffs and unemployment, well, that means people don't have any money to funnel it back into the economy, which means those other businesses like the big companies companies like Apple and Microsoft, well, they're going to have a harder time paying their employees because now nobody has as many sales. And simply in 2022, investors are not putting as much money in the stock market because they can't take on as much debt because the Federal Reserve has been raising its interest rates a lot throughout pretty much all of 2022. The Federal Reserve has been raising its interest rates to fight inflation. They want to bring down that demand. They don't want to have as much money circulating throughout the economy, so they're going to raise their interest rates, which means it's a lot harder for everyday Americans to get a mortgage or an auto loan or spend on a credit card, but it's also really hard for somebody to start a business. And it's also really hard for an investor to take on debt to give to a company. Now these companies that launched as IPOs, well, they're still in their infancy and they have no profit and no revenue. So they're starting to fail and they don't have any investor money. So they're failing too. And this is hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands of companies. And the the final thing that Michael Burry talks about is, of course, inflation. Now you've got extra costs for businesses and consumers. So consumers are naturally not spending as much money because everything costs so much more in 2022. Meanwhile, businesses have to pay more for all of their materials.
sales and all of their products that they want to bring to the shelves. Michael Burry believes that inflation is not going away anytime soon and that it's already deeply entrenched in our economy, meaning that it's going to stay elevated for a long time. People are not going to have as much money to buy things, so businesses have to pay them more. And once they pay them more, people will have more, but eventually, well, businesses are going to have to raise their prices again because now it's becoming a lot more expensive for them to make products. And once they do that, they'll again have to pay people more. This is a vicious cycle, and that means that stocks are basically doomed. All of these companies are going to be taking on less in their earnings reports, and they're going to have to pay more in their additional costs. So they're not going to be making as much in profits, and businesses and investors don't like to see that. All of these companies and investors that invest in all sorts of different funds don't like to see that. So they're starting to pull their money out, and that's why the stock market has been slowly trending downwards. And it's exactly why Michael Burry has sold his entire stock portfolio. Now, the big question is, what exactly does this all mean? Well, as far as meme stocks go, people are always looking to make a quick buck, and people right now are investing in these meme stocks not to make a whole bunch of money, but they want to stick it to the establishments like hedge funds. And they're willing to lose money in order to do that, but I think once people start losing a ton of money and go into financial ruin, then you'll start to see that saga eventually end. Of course, there are some people that are investing in these stocks because they're starting to go up and they believe that they could be the next big thing, but that's something that each individual is going to have to look at in their own portfolio and decide if it's a good buy for them. A lot of these companies define fundamentals, but that's been going on pretty much since the history of the stock market, and that is definitely not going to end. And what it comes down to is financial education, and you have to know how to pick these stocks for your own situation. The cryptocurrency market is interesting, though, because it could be the next big thing, or it could be a flop like the 2007 housing market crash, and right now it's really too early to tell. Some people believe that Bitcoin has no value because it's all intangible. It's a coin that is completely virtual, so it really doesn't have any real world value. The only thing that gives it value is that people think that it has value. But then there's the other component that is technology, and it could be a hedge against inflation because it doesn't function like our normal money. It kind of functions like gold in a commodity in that way because there can only be so many Bitcoins and some cryptocurrencies function the exact same way. They have a cap, which means they have that value because there can only be so many in the world. And like I said, Bitcoin is a lot more than just a currency. It's a technology and it could end up shaping how we use money in the future. So to say it doesn't have value or does have value is going to be determined by what we come up with technologically in the future. So that really could go either way. We're not sure what's going to happen with crypto, but right now Michael Burry is definitely leaning towards the right side. Same with the SPAC crisis. So a lot of these companies launched and now they exist, but honestly, because of our economic conditions, a lot of them are probably just going to disappear. And that is exactly what happens during crashes. And it's what you have to keep in mind for all different assets, whether it's an SPAC or an IPO, whether it's a meme stock or whether it's cryptocurrency. The economic conditions kind of breed all of these companies and make them go up and up and up and create kind of this super bubble. But once again, the economic conditions are going to dictate if they're going to survive. And the fact of the matter is a lot of these companies that have no revenue and have no profits and bring in way too many costs simply are not going to survive in 2022 and in 2023. They can't make money from sales. They're not going to get any investor money and the government isn't bailing them out either. So they're going to have to be dissolved, bought by another company, or they're just going to go bankrupt. Same thing with cryptocurrency. So crypto has exploded, but the cryptocurrencies that end up surviving this big economic crash that Michael Burry is predicting, those are going to be the ones that people truly do deem valuable. Right now, there's over 10,000 cryptocurrencies, but by the end of this potential crash, we could potentially see half as many or even more. There's really no way to tell, but that is exactly what a crash does. There's no money coming in. So the ones that survive, whether it's a stock, a company, or a currency, those are the ones that are fundamentally good. I mean, why do you think that companies like Coca-Cola and Ford and all of these other businesses have survived the test of time? We've had market crashes like the Great Depression, hyperinflation in the 1970s, and yet these companies are still here. This is because these companies are fundamentally sound and they know how to make a profit and adapt through any type of market conditions. Now, what I will say on the inflation front is that the core factors that are causing inflation, well, they could start 
coming down in the future. Like energy prices are slowly starting to drop in the United States and so are other things like shelter costs and some food costs. These are things that most Americans are spending most of their money on. So if wages go up just enough and inflation comes down just a little bit, well then everything will kind of equal out. We're not in a great situation still because that inflation is always going to exist, but it's not going to be running rampant. So you don't have that vicious cycle like I mentioned earlier. And if inflation ultimately goes down, then businesses are going to recover because they don't have as many costs and people can start buying things once again, which means the stock market isn't going to crash and neither is the economy. And again, this has happened in history and that's exactly what Michael Burry is looking at. During 2001, the United States had the dot-com bubble and it was exactly similar to what we're seeing right now. Big speculative investments hitting Wall Street with millions of investors pouring their money behind companies that were unproven. A lot of these companies were tech giants and they were companies that basically just slapped dot-com on their name and suddenly they were valued at a billion dollars because the internet and websites was an emerging market. A lot of them ended up not making any money and they weren't successful because just slapping dot-com on your name does not mean you have a successful business. Investors tried to make money quickly off of these stocks and everything eventually crashed because of it. But what you have to remember too is even though things crash, eventually things go right back up and I'm not saying that's going to be true with every single market, but we have seen this in the stock market and the housing market before. You gotta remember in 2007, even though most people were going into foreclosure on their mortgage, well, we still ended up getting out of that entire crisis. Home values dropped by 90% then, but now in 2022, they are worth triple what they were back then. Things go in cycles, and this is exactly how our economy has always functioned. Same thing with the stock market. We've had stock market crashes, stock market booms before, and this is just how things go. It's a cycle, and you have to understand the market cycle and invest accordingly. The most important thing that you can do right now with your investments and your money is to just stick to your financial plan. Don't think that you're going to get rich quick because it usually doesn't ever happen. And don't get all emotional. If the stock market goes down, well, just kind of assess your plan here. If your plan is to be a long-term investor and keep your money there for the next 30 years, it does not matter what happens today or tomorrow in the stock market. It only matters what the stock market looks like 30 years from now. So keep investing accordingly and don't get emotional if things go on a roller coaster ride. Michael Burry has made a lot of predictions about our stock market and our economy. And what you need to know is that every single market downturn and every single market boom, well, there are different factors that cause that. Every single recession is going to be different from the last. So it's hard to tell exactly where we might be headed in the future. But at the end of the day, you are the one that can make the best decision for your own portfolio. Never blindly listen to investors or experts or random people on YouTube. Always do your own due diligence and make sure you're always financially educated while staying up on the times. And remember, the best time to invest and build wealth is today. It's always today. Don't worry too much about trying to time the market. Don't worry too much if we're in a boom or a bust. Always try to stick to your own financial plan with your own financial goals. And I can almost guarantee you that you will always end up on top. But now I want to hear from you on this issue. What do you think about Michael Burry's prediction for our stock market and economy in 2022? Do you think that factors like cryptocurrency and meme stocks and inflation and SPACs are creating a super bubble that is just now starting to pop? Or do you think that this time Michael Burry is wrong and these are not all speculative investments and once our economy and inflation starts to improve, everything is going to boom once again? Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with all the top business and financial news from around the country, our team puts together a free daily newsletter and you can subscribe to it by clicking the link in this corner right here. And if you want to stay up to date with me and everything else happening in the business and financial world, I'm putting out updates seven days a week over here on this channel and I've actually got another one ready for you right here. So be sure to check that out before you go. That is it for me everybody. Be kind out there and I'll see you all in the next one.